There are a few safety critical issues when it comes to starting and stopping the circulation system. So first of all, let's talk about loss of prime. What this describes is where the circulation pumps and the pipe work in that vicinity loses the water because all of that pipe work should be flooded with water because the circulation pump impellers uh, need to be drawing on water rather than air. Um, if air gets into the system when the water drains out of there, then you've lost prime and the impeller might well continue to be spinning, but it's not going to actually be able to create any vacuum. So no suction actually happens. What causes a loss of prime is where the plant room is orientated uh, above the level of the swimming pool itself. So for example, got your pool tank and the water level sort of comes to this level here. You can see above the water level, you've got your pumps, filters and injection points as well. It's not like this in every plant room, by the way. In fact, it, in most plant rooms, the, the equipment is below the level of the uh, swimming pool. What that does, it creates a head of pressure because of gravity. All of the water is sort of pressing downwards. So the idea is to have all of the pipe work and equipment located below the level of the swimming pool. So you get this head of pressure pushing downwards so that if the circulation was to stop, you wouldn't lose prime because all of that pipe work would remain flooded. But sometimes you get situations where all of this equipment, the pump and the filter, etc., are above the level of the of the pool. In that case, what will happen is it's not too bad when the circulation's going. Um, so when when you've got your pump here working away, it's it's going to be able to suck water up. You won't have a problem necessarily until that pump stops working, either through fault or through doing a backwash and you need to turn the, the circulation pumps off. What will happen in, in that scenario, if you look at the red pipework now, all of that stuff that was above the level of the pool, um, you're going to potentially get a backflow of water because you're going to get all of this pipework draining back what you could get there is as the water drains back mixes everything up that's in that pipe work so for example you've got your disinfection injection point there and you've got your acid injection point there and on this schematic they're both downstream of the filtration system and so what could happen there is when you mix that disinfection um, substance with the acid uh, pH correctant substance you're going to get a reaction that, that creates chlorine gas and that could then that chlorine gas that gets created will just sort of sit there until you re-establish the power supply to the pump and of course what's going to happen then this, this toxic noxious gas that got created there is going to get pushed all the way through into the pool but you can still get a situation where um, where the circulation potentially stops either through a power cut or because it's been manually shut down for whatever reason for backwashing, for example. And yet the chemical dosing system continues to pump chemicals in. This has there are, there have been cases of this happening on these automatic dosing systems. Usually, what you'll get is an interlock between the uh, circulation flow going around the system and the sensor in a chemical dosing system. So for example, you've got the sample for testing being drawn through here off the pool through this sample cell. And then you've got the chlorine and pH probes here sending information to the control panel. And then it goes back around and re-injected into the, into the system. So it's on a loop. What you have, it's, it's small, so I've sort of magnified it a little bit here. Can you see that little sort of metal 
bobbin. It's a, like a, a float sensor. It's a flow sensor. It's kind of not floating there as such. It's, it's being suspended in that position because of the pressure on this uh, sample loop. The pressure is usually provided by the pressure off, off of the main circulation system. So while the main circulation system has got water flowing through it, that little flow sensor there will be suspended in that position by that pressure that's sort of being borrowed from the, um, the main circulation flow. And when the circulation pumps get switched off, then there's no pressure going through this loop anymore. And so what happens is that little float there sort of sits down on the bottom and then there's this sensor here that is able to detect that that float has has um, descended and it will shut off that's the signal to the the cpu that there is no flow going through the system and it will shut down however the important thing to remember is that flow sensor that this interlock system is not a hundred percent reliable and if it fails it won't necessarily fail safe all it takes is for uh, mechanical damage uh, corrosion build up of scale yeah, a broken inline filter so this there's a filter here that's supposed to act to keep out all of um, most of the impurities um, from the the sample line uh, all these kinds of issues can make it such that that gets kind of stuck and so in, if, it, if that was to get stuck in that position, then when someone turns the circulation off, if that was stuck, then this is not receiving any signal to stop pumping chemicals into the system. And so you've, you've got a potential situation now where chemicals are continuing to be pumped into uh, pipe work where the water is not actually moving through. The interlock needs to be uh, double checked. So uh, what we would recommend is whenever you're turning off the power supply to the circulation pumps, bookend the procedure with chemical dosing off. Do what you need to do in the plant room. And then the last thing you do is put the chemical dosing back on, you know, by hand. So it's like you, you, you're actually turning off the power supply yourself manually. Either that or right into your procedure that you must check that that interlock system has actually worked don't just assume it's going to work all the time and never fail that's a dangerous assumption to make the advice also from putag is that these injection points should be at least 10 pipe diameters apart so whatever the the diameter of the um the pipe is so like the sort of width of the of, of the pipe multiply that by 10 and that's how far these injection points should be apart but that might not be the set the situation in your system and to be honest even if they are uh, 10 uh, pipe diameter uh, diameters apart it there's no guarantee that if those chemicals continue to pump in, that they're not eventually going to meet in the middle anyway. You've got to be very careful when you're turning the circulation system off. Be aware of what will happen to the system in your system if you turn the circulation off. What will the effect be? Will you maintain a head of pressure? Is, is the pool above all of this equipment in the plant room? Um, or are you, when you're in the plant room, are you sort of slightly above the level of the, the pool? In which case, when you turn the circulation off, you're going to get that backflow um, of, of, of water back down to where your, your pool is orientated. Uh, and it's also important to be careful about when you turn the circulation system back on, especially if there has been a power cut uh, at all. Because if, if, for example, there's been a power cut, when the power is then re-established, and this might be obviously when there's nobody on site, if it happens in, in, in the middle of the night or something like that. What might happen is that the usually what happens with the circulation pumps, they might require someone to actually restart those by hand. So when the power comes back on, the circulation pumps might not come back on, but the depending on the design of your system or what type it is 
the chemical dosing system might come back on, but not the circulation pumps, in which case we're back to the same thing again with the chemicals um, being introduced into static, into static pipe work. So when there's been a, a failure or a stoppage of the, of the circulation system, always be very careful about re-establishing the, um, the flow again, about re-establishing the circulation. Be aware of the hazards. Do a, a sort of a dynamic risk assessment before you flick that switch and get the power re-established. Don't re-establish uh, circulation after there's been an outage with people back in uh, with people in the pool uh, in case anything does go wrong and that leads me on to a um, a case where there was an incident that uh, happened at a at a site uh, so david lloyd leisure limited the well-known national chain of over 90 health and leisure clubs was prosecuted by ipswich borough council for an offence contrary to section 3 of the health and safety at work act following a release of noxious gas into the pool at its Ipswich branch and was fined £70,000 and ordered to pay £60,000 in costs. The morning following a power surge, the David Lloyd Ipswich manager on early morning duty noticed that the electrical systems had been affected, but went ahead to admit bathers into the swimming pool. The club's technician was called in and established that the electrically operated pumps which circulate the water from the pool through the filters and heater and then with disinfecting chemicals injected back into the pool had stopped functioning and that the water was not circulating. This was consistent with bathers noticing that the, the pool water was colder than usual as it had not been circulating through the heater and back into the pool. With about 13 bathers still in the pool, the David Lloyd technician and manager went ahead with attempts to restart circulation. The circulation pumps needed to be primed because it had lost prime. This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. That is to say that they and their associated pipe work had to be filled with water rather than air before they would have any effect of drawing water through the system and pushing it out into the pool. And running them with air in the system would not cause water to circulate. This issue of repriming, for which David Leisure had no set procedure, was, as the sentencing judge said, at the heart of what went wrong. Something to ask yourself now, have you got a written procedure for repriming the pumps if you happen to be operating a plant room where the pumps do tend to lose prime when you turn the circulation off? The technician and manager working in the plant room at the second attempt managed to get the circulation restarted, but the effect of their doing so was to push a considerable quantity of gas and a yellow brownish stain into the water in two areas of the pool. This erupting noxious gas not only smelt foul, but was sufficiently toxic immediately to affect the breathing and eyes of nearby bathers. One described it as like breathing fire. As the sentencing, sentencing judge remarked, this must have been very frightening to bathers who did not know uh, who did not know what the substance was affecting them or where this was leading. They all fortunately managed to make their way to safety, but five of them needed hospital treatment. This was the second similar incident at David Lloyd Ipswich. Just under two years before, a release of noxious gas when water circulation was restarted led to eight bathers being affected and a pregnant woman being hospitalised. Uh, David Lloyd took some steps in response to that incident, but crucially failed to introduce any procedure or requirement to clear the pool hall before restarting stalled circulation. David Lloyd admitted during proceedings that its response back then had been inadequate. The chemicals used to disinfect a pool like David Lloyd Ipswich, if combined carelessly, can generate highly toxic chlorine gas. That's mustard gas or something similar, by the way. Um, so deadly, it's used as chemical weaponry, which can kill even at low concentrations. 
In the immediate aftermath of the incident, David Lloyd Leisure staff did not follow their own emergency action plan and training. Such a release of noxious gas having so marked an effect on bathers should have generated an emergency response and one on a worst case basis whilst the cause and identity of the noxious gas remained unclear. David Lloyd Leisure, which strenuously denied exposing its bathers to chlorine gas or to risk doing so, uh, insisting that the procedures had been, that the exposures had been of chloramines uh, on both occasions, pleaded on a negotiated basis which admitted not having a procedure for when pumps were reprimed uh, and circulation restarted with associated other systemic failures of safety management at Ipswich over the period of almost two years between the two incidents, culminating in the exposure which hospitalised five. The sentence was passed at a time before any new health and safety guide, uh, sentencing guidelines had been published, currently expected not before November 2015 by the Sentencing Council. So the, the 70 odd grand would probably be uh, a hell of a lot more following those sentencing guidelines that were came in in 2016, actually. So in summary, be careful when it comes to turning circulation systems back on after having been off. Be aware of this loss of prime issue and whether it affects your particular pool. Be aware of the injection points where they are for each chemical, each um, the disinfectant injection point and the acid injection point. Again, be aware of where they are on your pool.